Okay. The day of the siege had finally dawned. We had arrived at the Demon Lord's castle, and we were as ready as we would as we could be. Many armies bearing different banners and colors washed over the grounds before the castle, ready to rush in and lay waste to the Demon Lord and the remainder of his forces. All of us shared a common enemy, and upon his demise would be finally would all finally know some form of peace. Even during the roll call of the major generals, the air became full of determination and pride. Mirth! Avarice! Nadia! Fiorna! Aradum! Each name called became a mark on history. This was this was the war to bring freedom or destruction to the demon world. If the rebellion didn't win this fight, then the war would never end. If the rebellion won, then the world would become united in a hopefully peaceful rule. The hour before the battle was set to take place. My thoughts instantly ran back to our final meeting in Lilith Castle. Diana had pulled the leaders and us together, instructing us on how exactly to proceed. Sero, you will be joining Shadow and Sergeant in the front, taking care of the main army head on. I expect that you will come out of it alive. Yes, my lady. Rabbit, Fay, you are in charge of range attacks and defense. We cannot allow any of those blasted imps getting to us from behind. Yes, ma'am! As Diana looked to me, I grew slightly fearful. I had to get into the Demon Lord's castle, but how exactly did Diana plan on getting me there? You and your fiancé will take the side route straight to the castle. Wait, huh? We've organized our army to have our strongest on the front lines and against the tree line, giving us a side route for you to make your way straight to the castle. If anything trickles into the side route, you'll be able to handle it. However, there is something I must ask of you. What is it? If you are indeed attacked, you need to defend your fiancé the entire way there. Do not let him use his energy. Uh, well this is awkward. What? Are you insane? But... When you get to the castle, I will be fighting one-on-one -on -one with the Demon Lord. If something should happen to me, then I need you to take over. She is not ready to fight him, and you need to be at full strength to finish him off. I hate to be that person, but, uh, we got a human over here? She'll be fine. She has a way to defend herself. Thanks, Rabbit. Okay, we'll just ignore that then. I stared, listening and reaffirming the order. I couldn't lie, I was nervous. However, I was determined enough to see this through. I looked over at my fiancé with a confident smile. I got this. Don't worry. Despite the worried look in his eyes, he nodded and held my hand, trusting me in my decision to agree with Diana's command. Diana rolled her shoulders and looked at the map draped over the war table between us all. Her gaze pierced into the parchment as the aura around her body pulsated in anger. I will fly ahead and meet the Demon Lord head on. No matter what happens, I will not allow that monster to live. The pure determination and anger in her voice practically sent a shiver down my spine. She was set on seeing this through to the end, and I was sure that she was willing to even die if it meant taking the Demon Lord with her. The remaining Incubi and the Wives were asked to stay behind the army and guard the main base, where Rabbit and Faye were stationed. They needed as many eyes as possible in the back of the battle, so the four couples were perfect to keep things in check. As they agreed, the meeting ended and the mental preparation had begun. The idea of the upcoming battle scared me, sending waves of fear and worry up and down my body in response to the thought. So... This is our last day in the demon world. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Damien and I stared at the map outline of the dark castle that was once his unwanted home. Damien's hand slowly eased into mine as he spoke again. I will protect you no matter what. I promise. I listened to him speak before nodding, taking in a deep breath. Everything would be okay. We would be fine. I had to believe in myself and get us to the castle when the time was right. Like a beacon, our forces became the banner of hope and strength for the rebellion. At the sight of Diana, many soldiers bowed or stared in awe and inspiration. Maybe it was her presence, or maybe it was for what she stood for, but as Diana stood at the cliffside of the mountain, the air became full of energy and power. My fiancé, Rabbit, Faye, and I stood behind her as Diana stood on the ledge of the cliffside, addressing the rebellion for their final battle. Her voice echoed across the field, booming and reverberating through the air like thunder. Melites! Et hoc liberati istureit ramcun tuis omnibus conversiris! 
Stå på viskum, reduce dig på oss att spem. Nokte, lava vi mor, arkem, hostium sanguine. What is she saying? She said that the castle will be bathed in blood, and she will lead everyone to freedom. <laughs> Damien sounds so jazzed about that. That first part's a bit much. It's just to spur the troops for war. I'm sure she didn't mean it literally. I nodded as I stared at the back of Diana's head. A part of me felt a little intimidated and jealous of the power she had. She really could make armies bow to her and obey her every whim. At the same time, I knew that she was doing the right thing for this world. Rabbit and Faye stepped forward and held their hands up toward the castle, focusing their energies and forcing the stone walls around it to crumble and dissolve down into the earth. Diana summoned her saber, letting it shine brilliantly as the purple taint over her skin began to twist and turn. Before my eyes, the taint on her back took shape, lifting off of Diana's skin and morphed into a set of demonic wings. I could only stare, jaw dropped, as Diana's body lifted off of the ground and began to fly over the legions, slowly gliding towards the castle. To war! To battle! At her final command, Diana's wings pulsated in the air, flapping gracefully as she swooped down and forward. She was charging and flying for the castle walls, saber bared and ready to spill blood. As the armies below began to bellow and march forward, Rabbit took hold of my shoulder and turned me away from the castle to face her. Come, we must hurry. Understanding the need for urgency, I nodded and rushed forward with the rest of the incubi towards the slope down the mountainside. Everything is in order. Sergeant Diana's guard are at the front lines, while Shadow is with his legion to the west. What about our route to the castle? We've done what we can to keep your way clear. We'll try to make sure the battle won't break through the path. I nodded, feeling the need to rush sniff at my heels, pushing me forward. My fiancé seemed to agree, gripping my hand and walking at my pace alongside me. However, as we finally arrived at the forest line, Faye and Rabbit stopped, looking back to us. Straight through here. The sound of the war will always be on your right, so do not get lost. You'll be fine, though. Just follow the tree line. In sync, my fiancé and I nodded in acknowledgement before turning to see the other brothers and their wives. So, this is it. Remember your surroundings and protect each other. Be careful, all right? Make sure you stay safe. Princess, brother, we'll see you in the end. We have faith in you. You'll make it there, and we'll return to the human world soon. Kick his dead body a couple times for me, all right? Right in the head. We'll be right here rooting for you and watching your back, okay? We'll finish this and rush in as soon as we can, all right? Make sure you kick some serious ass. Show that old goat what he gets for messing with you. I smiled despite the nerves running through my body. I held onto my fiancé's hand and gave it a hard squeeze before receiving one back in kind. We'll finish this, then we'll go home. The group nodded before I slowly turned and looked into the tree line, took a breath and rushed forward. Matching my speed, my love followed, weaving through the trees behind me to not lose sight of me. I can't wait to see my lion in action! The journey was surprisingly uneventful. The sound of the war boomed beside us outside of the tree line, causing me to cover my ears a bit from the volume, but I shook my head and pressed forward, not wanting to become distracted. The goal was to get to the castle. I had to focus. As a line of incoming imps came into view, I glared and stopped, placing a hand over my chest and preparing to summon my guardian. Waves of energy pulsed around me before I jutted my hand out, forcing the familiar lavender and white mist to shoot out from my hand and slam itself onto the ground ahead of me. As it cleared, it formed my animal guardian, who let out a large battle roar and made the trees around us tremble from the sheer force of his voice. I could hear my incubus jump back at the sound, surprised to see my summoning and staring at awe at it at the same time. Huh? What? What is that? <laughs> oh, Damien. That was so good. However, I didn't care at the moment. All I could focus on were the imps that I had successfully stopped and intimidated with my animal. Move out of my way! I jetted my hand forward, pointing at the imps that were stunned from my animal's cry and commanded my animal forward. Go! On my command, the lion rushed forward, charging straight at one of the imps ahead of it and pouncing on it. 
As it landed, it swiped its large paw at the imp, ripping his chest open. On my command, the wolf rushed for- Wolf? Wait. I have a wolf now? Whoops. Lion! Rush forward, beelining towards one of the imps ahead of it and pouncing upon it. As it landed, it snapped its teeth around the neck of the imp, shaking him like a rag doll and ripping its throat open. I rushed forward, causing my incubus to follow behind me, as my animal continued to claw and bite through the imps in our path, uncaring if they were attacking or frozen still from fear. The more imps that fell, the more reinforcements became shell-shocked. Some managed to drive their weapons into my animal, causing me to flinch and reel back a bit from the pain, but I pressed forward knowing that I would be alright in the end. My animal pushed forward as well, animalistic in its carnage. The remaining imps began to quake and step back in fear, most likely never seeing a human use magic and slowly decimate their number. I didn't seem to mind as they became open targets for my animal to strike down as we rushed onward towards the castle. My incubus, despite probably being surprised at my animal's carnage, followed as I continued forward, commanding my animal through every imp that came in our way. I had lost count of how many crossed us, but I didn't care. All I cared about was getting to the castle. By the time we reached the end of the forest, there were a slew of dead bodies behind us. I stood at the tree line, panting and feeling waves of lost energy echo through my body as my animal began to slowly fade away. I watched my animal stare at me, its eyes asking if it had done well. I smiled and nodded slightly before it bowed its head and disappeared from sight, unable to maintain its form any longer without, en without my energy to fuel it. That was pretty neat. That was all I could do before my energy was expended and a wave of exhaustion rolled through my body. I began to fall forward, exhausted. My fiancé, however, quickly rushed forward and caught me in his arms. Whoa! I got you. Are you okay? H huh I looked up to see Damien staring down at me with worry and panic in his expression. We were safe for the moment, so I merely smiled up at him with a nod. I'm fine. I promise to protect you, like you protect me. Damien softly smiled and hugged me to him, pressing his head into my shoulder. I love you so much. I hugged him back, feeling relieved that we had finally arrived at the castle and were about to rush inside. As we slowly pulled away, Damien lifted me up and held me to my feet. Will you be okay? I nodded, shaking off the exhaustion from my mind. I was ready to end this. I looked up at the castle gates and felt a rush of determination run through me. Let's go finish this. With that, Damien and I rushed forward into the castle. The final battle had begun. Ah. The castle halls were grim and dark, sending shivers through me as Damien and I ran through them towards the sounds of battle. All across the ground were bodies of slaughtered imps and soldiers, most likely dead by Diana's hand. As we finally arrived in the throne room, Damien held out his arm to stop me and protect me from the battle waging within. Diana and the Demon Lord were in some sort of an energy deadlock, with a bolt of red energy streaming out of the Demon Lord's hand and colliding with a purple flame that came from Diana's. The two energies pressed against one another, unrelenting in their violent crash as each stream of energy tried to obtain dominance over the other. The Demon Lord and Diana were equally matched. Give up, Succubus! This world will bow to me! Over my dead body! That can be arranged! A burst of red energy pulsed around the Demon Lord's body, intensifying his bolt of lightning in the deadlock and forcing Diana to step back from the sheer force of it. Despite this, Diana pressed back, regaining her momentum and her ground. Damien and I remained still and quiet, watching the bout. Damien was meant to be back up in case something happened to Diana, and thankfully she didn't necessar necessarily need help for now. Or at least it didn't look like it. Maybe Di Damien wouldn't have to step in after all. Oh, if only. Diana shut her eyes and seemed to focus her energy, large black and purple flames slowly crawling around her body in a threatening aura as the power behind her energy stream increased and began to push back hard against the Demon Lord. As Diana opened her eyes, I gasped as they revealed themselves to be completely covered in gold. <laughs> For a moment, the Demon Lord seemed to struggle maintaining his place, stepping back to try and remain upright as the hard push Diana was throwing his way. However, as he turned his body, the Demon Lord spotted me and Damien at the entrance of the hall, and a smirk grew on his face. Ah, uninvited guests! Ah! Diana suddenly turned her head our way, surprised at the acknowledgement which caused her momentum to falter a bit. 
Taking the chance, the demon lord released another pulse of energy at Diana, forcing her to bend back a bit and stumble on her feet. <laughs> Diana's eyes returned to normal as she raised her other hand to assist in the stream of energy from her end of the deadlock, attempting to push forward again and regain her place. The demon lord, however, laughed. Can't we just, like, grab onto her back and give her what's what we have of our energy? <laughs> Call it a day. useless! Or not. With the final push, the Demon Lord let out an angry snarl and forced his energy forward, causing Diana to slam back against the far pillar and lose concentration in her attack. Smirking evilly, the Demon Lord took the chance and shot a bolt of red lightning at Diana, electrocuting her. <laughs> Diana! Damien growled and stepped forward, but through her torture, Diana turned her head and glared hard at Damien, making him freeze in place. Not your turn! Ah. Despite being covered in red-tinted bolts of lightning, Diana began to focus her energy again and formed a deep purple aura around herself, letting the Demon Lord's attack bounce around her new barrier. With a breath, Diana let her energy pulse out, dissolving the Demon Lord's attack and shot a burst of purple flames in retaliation. Her flames slammed themselves into the Demon Lord's chest, hunting him back towards the pillar opposite of hers. I could see the light in Diana's eyes flicker from blood red to gold as she looked locked eyes with the Demon Lord. Oh no, I feel a sneeze. It's you! It's you! Whew. Sorry, I know, intense battle going on, but sneeze wouldn't wait. Ugh. Ugh. Something began to burn beneath her murderous gaze, as if her simple stare was powerful enough to burn through the most courageous of hearts. However, the smirk plastered on the Demon Lord's face made my body shiver at the sight. He was nowhere near phased from Diana's glare. In fact, he seemed to find it amusing from the look in his eyes. So, the Rebel Queen is protecting the mistake. How pathetic. The only mistake that lives in this world is you. That's right. The echo of the Demon Lord's laughter bounced through the hall with an unforgiving reverb, invading my ears and pounding against my mind. I could feel his dark energy pass through his voice and shake my soul. This wasn't a nightmare or a vision. The Demon Lord was right in front of me, and his presence was terrifying. Diana and the Demon Lord began to circle one another, with Diana moving to stand in front of us, while the Demon Lord positioned himself in front of his throne at the foot of the dais. However, I could feel the anxiousness in Damien's arm as I held it to me, keeping him in place. He wanted to fight the Demon Lord, but Diana wasn't letting him, and it was bothering him to no end. Let me help. I don't need help. With that answer, Diana sprinted forward, summoning her wings and shooting herself like a bullet towards the Demon Lord. As she passed the midpoint of the room, Diana formed her saber in his hands, her hands, and swung it at the Demon Lord. To her disgust, the Demon Lord parried with ease with his own sword, knocking her saber back and swinging to get a slice of her. The battle became a quick slam of dodges and parries from the Demon Lord and Diana, the sound of steel clanging violently in the air. It became a challenge still keeping Damien near me. I could feel the anger and need for battle in his tense muscles, ushering me to squeeze it and pull him towards me cautiously. He obeyed, but who knew how long he would? What caused me to w look away from Damien was the sound of Diana crying out in pain. Ah! I watched as Diana's body flew across the room and slammed itself into the nearby wall, part of the balcony above it collapsing and crumbling on top of her. I could almost hear bones breaking from the rocks that had fallen on her. Diana, no! I could see Diana digging her way through the rubble, her hand clawing out of an opening in desperation to pull herself out. However, Damien took that chance to march towards the Demon Lord, ready to take up the fight. Where do you think you're going, sir? You got a human bod now, you gotta think these things through. Seeing his new opponent, the Demon Lord chuckled darkly and brandished his sword, pointing it at Damien in a taunt. So, you've come to try and stop me? You're as foolish as I remember! You know nothing about me. I may not, but I remember all about your mother. Oh, good grief. That sparked the flare in Damien's rage. Damien swiped his hand into his pocket and pulled out the gem Diana had given him. From the grip he had on it, I was surprised it didn't smash between his fingers. However, before Damien could step forward, a flash of purple zipped across the room and slammed into the Demon Lord's body, shoving him into a pillar and successfully destroying it with his body. Blah! Oh. I'm not done with you yet! The room began to slowly shape into the reflection of my nightmare, with rubble and stone littering the ground. 
Diana floated in the air on her wings, but I could tell that her leg and at least a rib was broken, making her curl over herself from the pain. Diana kept glaring at the demon lord, however, gritting her teeth through the pain and forming her saber once again in her hand. As only a couple fingers and her thumb managed to wrap around the handle, I could tell then that her hand was also injured. You'll have to kill me first before I let you get away. To see Diana continue to fight was remarkable, but I knew very well that she wasn't going to last long. One more avalanche of rubble on her would end her. The demon lord rose from the pile of stone that had fallen on him, grinning despite the blood rushing down his forehead. Then let me finish the job! With a cackle, the demon lord let his red energy pulse around him, making the rubble around him practically disintegrate, before he lunged forward and slammed his sword into hers, shooting them both towards the opposite end of the throne room. Diana and the demon lord returned to their clashing of steel as Damien only fumed at the bout. My instinct screamed at me to pull him back and calm him down, but was I in a place to stop him? We gotta try. He's, he's a precious human boy now. I don't want him getting hurt. She's still fighting. If she's not moving, we'll, we'll help, but this is not the time. She's still going. I had to force Damien to accept Diana handling the fight. If he interfered, then Diana might attack him as well, just from her adrenaline rush. I grabbed Damien's hand and pulled him back to me, needing to see set him straight. As he looked to me, I could see the need for revenge burning in his eyes. I instinctively felt bad, but I knew better than to let him rampage. Come on. I insisted and pulled Damien back towards the entrance of the hall, giving Diana and the Demon Lord's face to fight. Damien reluctantly followed, not allowing the anger in his eyes to die as he stared and pinned his gaze on the fight. <clears throat> Excuse me, just a second. <clears throat> Frog in my throat? Yeah. The battle intensified as we settled back in our place. Diana seemed to match equally to her opponent as the fight waged violently between them. Red lightning and purple flame sparked between their weapons, lighting the room with like fireworks. As Diana's saber flew out of her hands and clattered on the floor, she brought her arms up and, to my surprise, began to use her forearms to defend herself from the Demon Lord's blade. How it was possible, I would never know, but his blade would merely clang against the purple taint on Diana's skin, like she was wearing some form of armor, or perhaps her demon markings protected her. Regardless, Diana defended herself as much as she could until she was met with a kick to the chest, sending her flying back into another pillar and breaking it apart with her body. Her body was completely covered by rubble, unmoving and unwavering from the hit. Diana! Okay, now's the time. <laughs> the demon lord finally looked to Damien, tongue darting out to lick his blade as his smirk grew. Your turn, mistake. Damien snarled as he finally settled himself, ready to take on his father. Not only for the world and for his mother, but for Diana as well. Damien's body pulsed and caused him to keel over slightly from the burst of power in his chest. With a hiss, Damien growled as his body began to shift. His clothes slowly vanished and black markings began to crawl across Damien's skin. Alright, transform magical girl transformation time! As Damien's horns reformed on his head, the air began to shift to one of extreme cold. Something about Damien began to pulse with a dark energy. One I had not seen from him even before he lost his powers. As Damien finally locked eyes with the Demon Lord, a flash of black washed over his gaze, sending a vibration of fear down my back. Let's end this. Holy cow! He became the Reaper? He became Grim Reaper Boy? What the heck? That's amazing! In a show of power, the Demon Lord let out a snarl and charged forward with his sword. Damien, however, summoned a large, invisible burst of energy, pushing the Demon Lord back. The Demon Lord fell back and tumbled back up onto his feet after skidding across the marble with a snarl. I had to cover my face with my hands to block the gust of wind that followed, almost feeling myself slide across the floor on my heels from the wave. Damien was billowing with energy and it definitely showed. With a look of cold thirst for murder in his eyes, Damien lifted his head and raised his arms to his sides. In a similar fashion to the succubus before him, the black markings on Damien's back began to twist and turn, slowly pulling themselves off of his skin and forming a set of wings. Staring at them, they were surprisingly much larger than Diana's. They shuddered and flapped themselves through the air, pushing gusts of wind forward in a taunting gesture at the Demon Lord. 
As the demon lord began to stand, Damien brought his hands in front of him and formed a large rod of black mist in his hands. It quickly solidified in his grip and it began to gleam brightly as one end began to protrude and curve into the end of a scythe. I knew that the gem would intensify Damien's power, but just how much did it strengthen? The demon lord measured Damien with his eyes, glaring hard and gripping his sword tighter in both anger and a dash of surprise. How did you get this much power? Too much power! I don't answer to scum like you. Woo. With that reply, Damien swooped forward and swung his side back to reap through the demon lord like a grim reaper. Despite the demon lord being able to parry the attack with his blade, the demon lord found himself skidding across the floor from the force of Damien's attack. Damien became relentless and continued to swing and slam his side blade into the demon lord's sword. The heavy slamming of steel beating on steel boomed through the room as Damien began to push the demon lord back towards his throne. Finally, the demon lord was knocked back onto his throne, stunned momentarily as Damien pulled his scythe back, ready to decapitate his enemy once and for all. Unfortunately, the blade met with the demon lord's sword at the last minute, making me grimace in aggravation. I wanted this to end. I wanted the demon lord to fall already. This dance of death had gone on for long enough, and there was no reason for this battle to prolong itself any further. The demon lord was clinging to his last moments, and every part of me wished he would give up. Damien was more powerful than him. This fight would eventually be over. Damien pressed his body into his scythe, pushing against the demon lord. Give up. Trying to scare me, boy? Let me show you how it's done! Distracted by the deadlock, Damien was suddenly kicked back through the air, sent tumbling in surprise as the demon lord rose back onto his feet and locked eyes with me. A wave of fear shot through me and I was locked frozen in place. I knew he was going to make another move. I attempted to break free, mentally commanding every part of my body to move or do something to stop him, but no muscle in my body obeyed. Damien quickly tumbled back onto his feet, burning his gaze into the demon lord before looking back to me and seeing what he was doing to me. Be glad, boy! I'm setting her free from the demon world! What does that mean? With a sadistic howl, a red bolt of lightning rammed itself into the ceiling, causing a large rock above me to shatter off of the structure and plummet towards me. Look out! I am aware. The boulder quickly impacted my back. It wasn't heavy enough to completely crush me against the marble, but I could tell that I had broken I had a broken rib or two. Hey, this is just like my dream now. However, I felt a body pressed against me, barring the boulder from completely smashing me beneath it. I looked up to see a familiar face, wincing at the pain now embedded in her shoulder and arms. Diana! D diana Despite being battered and bloodied, Diana gripped the boulder, pressing most of its weight off of me and taking it on herself, making sure my injuries were limited to just broken bones. Diana growled and pushed the boulder off of us at last, releasing a pained huff of air as she looked to me in concern. Are you alright? I should be asking you that. I could only nod, astonished at the turn of events. Diana was alive. How was that possible? Staring at her, I could tell she was near death's door, but she wasn't going to go down without the demon lord going down first. Her wings were pressed hard against her back, seemingly broken. But as she lifted me back up, a hum of purple energy rushed through Diana's body and forced her wings to flex out, snapping them into place once more. This battle isn't over. Not by a long shot. The pair of us looked over at the demon lord, seeing him emotionally seethe at the sight of us. You just don't know when to die, do you? Uh, is there a mirror around so he can say that to himself? Diana smirked and stepped forward, holding her hand back towards me and forming a large purple barrier around me. We've got unfinished business to take care of first. Right, Damien? With an angered nod, Damien stood, gripping his scythe while Diana formed her saber in her hand, materializing a wrap around her hand and the handle to keep it in her grip. It's over, you bastard. Baring his teeth, the demon lord gripped his sword and stepped down from the dais to meet Damien and Diana halfway. I will slaughter you both! A violent shudder ran up my spine at his words before Damien and Diana vaulted forward, slamming their weapons into the demon lord's parrying sword. At the collision, a bright flash of red, purple, and black energy sparked and lit the room like a large firework. I moved to the edge of the barrier, trying to watch from the safety of the spell around me, as Damien and Diana slowly began to beat down the Demon Lord's defenses, the spark between their clashing blinding the Demon Lord. No amount of bravado could save the Demon Lord now. 
The room slowly began to crumble just from the heavy sound waves of their fighting, causing rock upon rubble to fall onto the marble almost like hail. This time, Damien was nowhere near defenseless. Damien would escape with me, and the Demon Lord would die here alone. I felt confidence run through me at the idea. Damien could do this. Tired of the steel battle, Diana swooped around the Demon Lord and slashed at the back of his knees, forcing him to fall forward and drop his sword from the impact. Enough! Head this! Without a breath of mercy, Damien raised his scythe back, taking aim at his target. Goodbye, Father. Oh, Damien, you're so extra, though. A flash of black energy swept the room as Damien swung his scythe down and through the neck of the Demon Lord. For a moment, nothing seemed to have occurred. It wasn't until a large open line appeared on the Demon Lord's neck and his eyes began to glaze over that I realized what had happened. In an angled cut, not perfect by any means, the Demon Lord's head slid off of his shoulders and tumbled to the marble floor, rolling until it stopped on the edge of one of his horns. From his newly opened neck, black and red blood began to gush out and drain as the body fell forward. The sound of his body hitting the ground echoed through the chamber, solidifying the death of his father. The battle had been won at last. I could finally breathe! Oh, that was the most intense battle since James's. Good grief. The realization of the entire event coursed through me like a wave as a weight lifted itself from my heart. The curse, I knew then, had been lifted at last. I was free to go home. I began drowning in feelings of joy and relief, happy that it was all over and overwhelmed by everything that had happened. As the scythe beside me faded alongside the barrier around me, Damien slowly turned to face me, hearing my slowly growing cries of joy. It was almost overwhelming. We won. We really won. And he's back. Damien slowly started to walk towards me, his form fading from the demon he got the chance to be to the human he actually was. His clothes slowly materialized around his body, but the bruises and soot of the battle remained as a reminder of what had happened. Just looking into his eyes, I could see the satisfaction of his deeds blossom in his gaze. He stared at me, happy to see me, and I felt myself grin from ear to ear at him. I wasn't being pulled away from him, nor was he dead. Damien and I were together, and we were okay. Damien finally stopped in front of me and wrapped his arms around me, letting everything sink in within my embrace as I buried my face in his shoulder. I was tired of seeing the death around me now. All I wanted was to go home. You did it, Damien. Yeah. We can go home now. Oh, you still have your demon voice on. <laughs> I looked up at him, feeling the ache of the lost adrenaline in my system course through me as I clung to him. The war for us was over. At last. Diana, unfortunately, however, collapsed onto the ground on the days of the throne, panting for air as she stared at the pair of us in exhaustion. <laughs> Aw. Oh no! Somebody call Sarah quick! Before she could finish her sentence, Diana's eyes rolled into the back of her head and she completely passed out onto the ground. In a panicked rush, I thrust my hand out towards her. Sarah! In a flash of light, Sarah's form materialized and looked around, surprised at the summoning. As his eyes landed on the passed out Diana, he slammed down onto his knees and cradled her in his arms. Relieved to see her breathing, he hugged her to his chest, giving her his energy. Phew! I clung to Damien, now mentally wiped out. Who knew the end of a battle was so exhausting? I had fought with Lisette once before, but it was nowhere near as intense as this fight was. Not by a long shot. Ah, oh, that reference. Damien and I looked at each other, both of us feeling the lack of energy from the battle attempt to consume our bodies, before leaning into one another for a well-deserved rest. One thing was for certain. This chapter of my story had come to an end. <laughs>